Hello and welcome to, I mean, boy, it's been a long time, the January 8th edition of The End of the World. And you must be asking, might be asking, what prompts The End of the World, and especially that title? <laughs> I told you it was The End of the World. That's the title of tonight's episode, and uh, it is... Well, let's just get right to it. Let's just dig into it. Now, my name is Glenn. I'm the host. And remember, even though I was an attorney and I retired, uh, nothing I say tonight is legal advice doesn't create a client-attorney relationship between us. Never rely on a podcast for legal advice. And there's no intention that what I tell you to be any form of either legal advice or to create an attorney-client relationship. What we are going to talk about tonight, though, is really bad. Okay, I come to you with bad news, and that's why I'm doing this. I want to be the one who gets it to you first, not for uh, self-aggrandizement, but because it's something that you really, really need to know, even for going out tonight to the market. It affects everything. Maybe I'll start there at the end. The the long, the short of tonight's discussion with myself will be use that mask. And if you have anything else, I, I don't really know of any, but if you have anything else that's going to help you when you go outside to prevent catching COVID, use that too, because avoiding COVID is now... 50 times more important than it was yesterday. Now, I know that wearing a mask is what we do for outdoors, but actually I have heard and read that indoors we have three things that we can do that actually do medically help you cut down on the seriousness of your COVID, but... That may not be the answer. So let's just get into it. The, well, the things that you can do that actually will cut down on the hospital stay, the likelihood you go to the IC of U, ICU, and the uh, likelihood that you'll avoid a serious case where you have to be intubated, given oxygen. First, zinc. Zinc does work to help prevent that stuff. 25 milligrams twice a day, which equals 50 milligrams for those of you that didn't graduate third grade, of standard zinc that you get at the pharmacy or market even, that'll work. Now that, if you take it, there's a massive improvement at the 15 days. And that's probably because most, not most, many people are zinc deficient and 15 days of taking the proper amount, twice a day, 25 milligrams, will get you in 15 days, your serum level will be up to normal and you will have the correct level of zinc. But be that as it may, it will show up in your ability to fight COVID-19. So do that. Vitamin D, I'm I'm not even going to discuss it anymore. It's been shown to be an effective agent in fighting any kind of virus, especially if you are vitamin D deficient. Just get vitamin D. I take five of those little round fish egg type things every day. Very, they're supposed to be very helpful. Now, there is a, I'm not even sure it's a drug, but there is this stuff that other countries, it is a drug, it's called GABA, and in our country, the US of A, you, you can buy it without a prescription, it's not considered a drug, but it is, or has been shown in some medical tests to be a great fighter of covid so if you have some of that, that would be great too. I don't really know the, the details on it. And if anybody emails me, 
at Prince Prospero. That's one word, Prince Prospero at gmail.com. That is my email address. Send it again. Here we go. Prince Prospero at gmail.com. Okay, raise your hands out there. Who knows who Prince Prospero was? Raise your hand. Now, he's a fictional character. Raise your hand. I don't see any hands raised. Uh, wait a minute. I don't see any hands at all. I don't see anything. Okay, forget it then. Um, Prince Prospero at Gmail. Send me your email and uh, let me know. The important thing that we're going to be looking at, though, is the effect of covid on people who catch it and the people who get the mild cases. That's, we had thought that the people that got the mild cases had dodged the bullet. And the bullet, of course, is long COVID. You don't want to get long COVID. The study that just came out on this topic, and I know I haven't gotten to the payoff, but I'm getting to it shows that what you can expect out of long COVID, or some people would argue, well, this is just where they've drawn the divider line. This is long COVID and this is not. But if you get long COVID, you can expect for at least a year, and we don't know, it could be life long. First thing is brain fog, the first in all of these is neurological problems. That seems to be the most common and the one that this fucking virus just really seems to go for. So neurological problems, and that can be anything from the brain fog is is very, very common, but we're also talking about trouble sleeping. We're talking about depression and it is impossible to divide up how much of that is caused by the disease and how much is caused by having the disease. So depression, we're talking it is even possible that it goes further and gets into things and causes uh, hallucinations. It can cause... Horrible dreams where you wake up from dreams that you think are real. It can cause all sorts of neurological problems. And it might be too soon because I was going to include it as a physical problem. But loss of smell and taste, those are very common, very prevalent symptoms of long COVID. I like to call it long haul COVID, like the Australian truckers. That, that's, that was, I think, the first term I heard. But long COVID, long haul COVID, loss of taste, loss of smell. And I mentioned this about 10 episodes ago, but there are some of you out there that emailed me and said that. And so uh, what's the big deal? Well, the reason it's a big deal is that trying to eat when you have no sense of smell or taste is terrible. It's horrible. It's, it's, I would compare it to imagine if tonight somebody tried to feed you like shit for dinner. And if somebody told you, well, you could just chew it up and eat it, nothing, or you'd say, no, fuck you, that's not right. Well, that is what happens when food has no flavor or taste. And we remember that news from junior high that it's actually the smell that gives you the strongest part of the taste. So if your sense of smell is gone, your enjoyment of food is gone. And eating now becomes a chore that you don't want to do as opposed to the joy of eating food that tastes good. You don't want to lose your sense of smell or taste and long haul COVID does that all the time. Now, here is the bottom line. I may, if there's time, I may go back and name a bunch of other symptoms of long haul COVID, uh, symptoms or effects, whatever. But it boils down to this horrendous truth. 
And this is off the study that came out last night in the Journal of the American Medical Association. So it's not some BS. Long-haul COVID can attack almost any organ. So, as you are presumably a human, I don't know actually who listens to this, if anybody, if you look at yourself, anything you see that is part of your body could be attacked by COVID. You could have problems with any of it. So that means if you're looking now at your hands, yeah, COVID could get in and attack the nerves to your little finger so that your little finger either doesn't work or hurts like hell every time you move it. Any part on your body can be attacked by COVID. Now, there was that study about one month ago. I'm not sure if it was a study or if it was just some doctors made an announcement because it was such a scary, horrible finding. But the important thing was that they had two women, unrelated, didn't know each other, but both of them had problems that they could not trace. One of them having gynecological problems that the doctors couldn't figure out. One having skin problems, just a rash and the rash turning into a kind of a scabby thing, and she couldn't get rid of it. Even though they gave her the typical, here's some steroid cream, that's what they give you when they don't know what you've got. That is always the sign. When your doctor gives you a steroid cream, that is the sign of an incompetent diagnostician. So they gave her that and every other kind of treatment and nothing worked. And then finally, at the end, they realized because somebody suggested, you know, we're going to have to take biopsies of these things and look into the goddamn tissue and see what is in there that's not supposed to be there. And in both of these cases, even though this one of them was gynecological and one of them was a skin lesion or attack, disease of some sort, COVID was the cause of both. Yeah, COVID attacked one woman's skin and caused her to have skin lesions, and COVID attacked and was found all throughout the woman's vagina. And what makes this even scarier, and I'm certain you don't need to be more scared, is that both of these people tested negative for COVID. If you gave them the standard, take that Q-tech, Q-tip kind of thing and whip, whip it around your nose, they were both negative for COVID. So they thought, hey, I dodged a bullet. I'm done. I'm negative. Hey, I don't have brain fog. No, the COVID is so devious and so evil that it finds places to hide in your body that it can hide and start multiplying and start damaging your organs in different ways and it doesn't tip off the COVID tests. So that's what happened in both of these. So that we're talking now that you can be testing negative for COVID and still have terrible effects from it. Now, I'm not going to be able to interlace that with yesterday's study. Yesterday's study, the finding is that for the large majority of long-haul COVID cases that we currently have, most of them are the result of people who had mild cases of COVID. That's not what we believed before. Now, that could be because the number of people now that we are blessed with Omicron 
the number of people who get mild COVID is much greater now than the number of people who get severe COVID. So if you measure anything that comes from getting COVID, more people are going to get that from people who had mild COVID than people who had severe COVID because there's a lot more mild COVID going around than there is severe COVID. So that was to be expected, you could say. But we had hoped, and there were some very tentative studies when this thing started a couple years ago that said, well, gee, it, 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 it looks like it looks like long COVID is a result of getting a bad dose of COVID-19. And so if you could just do everything possible to make sure that the dose you get is minor, you know, and you take everything you can to fight the, the invasion you get, the infection you get, you've got a good chance that your actions will prevent you from being stricken with long-haul COVID. Well, none of that's true, or at least it's not true in any large degree that matters. What we've got instead is the very obvious truth that, and the numbers just show this, that a minor case of COVID, one that doesn't get you on a ventilator, doesn't get you in the ICU, and of course, hopefully one that doesn't kill you, but one that you're not hospitalized, that you just stay home and spend a couple days sick. Even one that you went to the doctor and got that Paxilovid or, uh, pill that's going to cure you in just a couple days. You still have a very serious chance of ending up with long haul COVID. That's what this study shows. And that is a terrible, terrible finding and the only thing we can hope for is a medical miracle that says okay we have we found a way now that if you catch covid you uh if we give you this treatment you won't catch long haul covid but there's no such thing as that right now let's not get into that okay how about how about for heading in for landing here what is the effect right now of these cases of long-haul COVID? If we take all these people we're talking about, what what is it that you're looking at? What's the risk? You better sit down. Okay, right now the CDC lies and says, well, looks to us like the number of people who have died from COVID is 3,500. But everyone knows that's a lie. Roughly, it's going to turn out to be a, right around 300,000 at the moment. There's about 300,000 people that have died from long COVID and either their hospital didn't realize that was what was doing it. Because long COVID has the, the wonderful <laughs> at, uh, uh, attack method that it, takes your other diseases that you have, like diabetes or heart problems, and it aggravates those. And so the person, I won't say you, the person dies from what looks like a heart attack or a stroke, and it doesn't get recorded in their death certificate as actually having been the result of covid and yes, COVID can do this even after you test negative with those Q-tips up the yin-yang. So the number 3,500 is just ridiculously low. That's what the CDC says. But what you really want to sit down and, and get, get ready for, because here it comes, the effect of COVID, long-haul COVID, to the people that have it a year or more is comparable in severity to having a serious brain trauma. Okay? So 
the shell of a human being that you are after a year of long haul COVID is close to what you would be if a year ago, instead of getting COVID, somebody had whacked you in the head with a metal baseball bat. You'd still be having headaches, COVID. I did leave that out of the symptoms, didn't I? Headaches, neurological issues where your hearing is off, your vision is off. COVID does both of those. COVID can do the weirdest thing that it hurts to touch things. I've heard of this from a couple other diseases, but I've never actually seen somebody that have it. But COVID actually does have a variation where if you reach over and you touch the bottle of fly spray that I have in front of me, it actually hurts to to hold it. But it can also make it give you muscle aches, back aches, headaches, every kind of ache there is COVID can cause. So what it but what it does to you mentally, to your ability to function. Now think if this is you, and let's say like me, you live by yourself, how are you going to arrange for meals? How are you going to eat? Well, that is the bad news. So it, it's a two-step realization of where we are. The first step is that I, I, this is the takeaway from tonight. There's two. One, long-haul COVID results from any case of COVID. If you catch COVID, you've got a chance of walking away with long-haul COVID. If you are a woman, you have twice the chance of a man. If you're a woman, you have four times the chance of a child catching long-haul COVID. But yes, even children, and, and this is impossible, Even children get long-haul COVID. That is demonic. And the second part is, well, how serious is long-haul COVID? Well, they've narrowed it down to it basically has the same impact on your life as if you had a serious or major brain injury from, let's say, a baseball bat hitting you or uh, a safe falling off of something and hitting you in the head or you falling down backwards and your head strikes the sidewalk. Remember when you fall. Remember from judo class. As you go backwards, stare at your belly button. Lift your head up as you fall backwards and stare at your belly button. And the whole time you fall, until the fall's over, Lift your head up and stare at your belly button. But if you don't do that, you bang your head when you go backwards and you'll have these same symptoms. I don't mean to laugh. So that's the takeaway for tonight. There's going to be some sort of supplemental finding or explanation of this awful, awful study. And I, of course, will bring it right to you. I'm going to rush this out to get it out tonight so that you'll get it with no music or no background, anything, but I will have it out by Wednesday night or so with uh, at least a little bit of introduction music and a little bit of say goodbye music. Please, like everybody else says, I would appreciate it if you would ring the bell, if you have that. If you give me a thumbs up, that would be good. Because that, if you do that, then they still, they show it to other people. Uh, I'm not going to go into tonight, even though I have a couple of times, the Idaho murder thing. That's that's would be sort of strange to mix with tonight's topic. But the Midas Touch has been doing that. They've been mixing politics and Idaho, and I I consider it just. Very, very strange to do it. Uh, The Daily Beans, I did try to notify them and let them know about this, and they really haven't done anything about it. And 
But there actually, you know what? There, there's one issue that I brought up to the Daily Beans. I'm sorry, I told you that we were going to get off, but there's there's some there's some little. I don't know if this gives you a ray of hope, but there was there's there's something going on right now that nobody's noticed but me again, and just remember, I was the guy who two nights before they arrested Dingbat Brian, I was the guy who said that the absence of something was more important than the evidence out there and that we had all missed a very big clue that told us something. And I wrote to many, like to Ashley Banfield and the other dingbat, the scientific crime, whatever, that they should shut their mouths because putting out bad information or good information does help the murderer escape responsibility or punishment. It helps them get off. But here's the point. I told everybody two nights before Brian was arrested that they knew who it was. There was no point going around saying the police are doing a shitty job. Why aren't they crawling in the window of the guy who said he heard a dog howling? How could they let him go? And, you know, people like me who said, it's got to be Jack. Why aren't they arresting Jack? The police knew who it was from the get-go this whole time. They've just been playing with us so that we wouldn't interfere with their investigation and the reason for that and I said this before they arrested Brian Bizarre Guy I said what are they missing use the Fleetwood Where's Waldo to solve the crime something is missing that is there every time there's a big case like this and if you were and I said this two nights before they arrested Brian if you look at the situation, the entire situation, you'll see that there is something missing that is in every case like this, and it's mysteriously absent. And that tells you that the police, that really the case is over because the police know who it is, and they're just waiting for the right chance to swoop up and get him, which is, which is how it worked out. What was that? The reward. There was no reward offered. If you walked into the police station and said, you know what, I know who killed those four people, but uh, I'm not going to tell you unless you give me a buck, they wouldn't give you the dollar. <laughs> they would not give you a dollar for that information. And that's because they already knew who it was from the moment they came in when those police officers went in the first day. They found a sheath. The sheath had DNA exactly where you would expect somebody to forget about it on the flap when he popped it open to take the knife out. So that's, so they've had his DNA from the get-go. And at the same time, they had people who found his car in a parking lot like two days after the murder. So they've known this whole time who it was. So all these... People out there complaining, why aren't the police telling us because we could then help solve the crime? They're idiots. Don't listen to those people. I'm going to cut this loose tonight. And uh, like I said, if you wait till Wednesday, I'll be nice enough to get you some music. I put this out without any sound effects or anything like that because I wanted to get this extremely disappointing news. Oh, I forgot what the good news was. Hey, thanks for reminding me. The good news is, the other night, the former president, the guy who's, okay, the former president came out and made very similar, similar, similar statements to ones that he made when he was the president and he escaped liability for because people said, well, he's the president, so, you know, he's the president he can't be arrested. Well, two nights ago, he made another horrible speech, and let's just talk about who it is. When he was the president, he made terrible, terrible accusations against a woman who was counting ballots in 
Georgia, I think it was. And he made the most horrible accusations and spread them, and, and they just spread like wildfire that these videos they had were of a woman stealing ballots. When, of course, it was a picture of a woman carrying a box of ballots as part of her work that she'd been hired to do to count ballots. And there was nothing about it, and that luckily the woman sued, and although her life was miserable, she got... Uh, 250000 so after lawyer's fees, she got about 150000 I think that's enough to cheer you up. But the other night, Donald Trump, with absolutely no evidence, nothing on which to base this horrible accusation, he made it again. And he named the woman. And the reason this is important is that when he did it the first time, he was the president, and so he couldn't be charged with a crime. According to the horrible memo, the Department of Justice keeps passing around and saying, well, it says this, so we can't, sorry, and nobody has the courage to stand up and say, I don't care what this is, and just rip it up and crumble it up and throw it in the trash, which they could do anytime they wanted. So Donald Trump could not be put in jail according to the people whose job it was to put him in jail when he did that the first time. But when he did it two nights ago, which would be January 6th, he wasn't the president anymore. And so he accused this woman, I think it's Miss Freeman, in Georgia of stealing ballots, which would be a crime. And if you accuse somebody of a crime that you know or should know that they didn't really commit, and he certainly is guilty of should know. Everybody knows he's already lost, or people have already lost the lawsuit those people filed and had to pay $250,000 to her. So anybody would know that 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 accusation is false, and he made it again. Well, that's actually a crime. It is a crime to accuse somebody falsely of having committed a crime. And in this case, the and in all cases, when you accuse somebody of that, that is called malicious prosecution. Doesn't quite make sense, but that, that is the name for when you falsely accuse somebody of a crime that you either knew or should have known they did not commit. And so I can clearly see, I mean easily see, if anybody has the balls to walk up and do it, I can see Donald Trump going to jail for a brief period. It wouldn't be much, you know, he could get 90 days, Maybe if he had a really strict judge, he could get six months. But he will, I believe, either could or will go to jail for having accused her again of having stolen. Or, you know, who knows what he's thinking. But she it's just a video of her carrying the ballot boxes that she's supposed to carry as part of her job. So she did nothing wrong. And anybody who tries to tell you she did is a lunatic. So jail for Donald, that's always a light at the end of the tunnel, huh? All right, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for listening, and I will talk to you in about three nights. This is Glenn, and this is the End of the World Podcast.